The overall impression is rich and fruity. Do you smell dried fruits, sultanas and raisins, Christmas cake perhaps? These are the scents you would expect from European oak ex sherry casks. But there are also soft fruits, green gauges and plums maybe, some almond oil. These aromas are typical of American white oak. In other words, the wood in which the whiskey matures plays a crucial role in its ultimate flavor. What you're smelling here has its origin a long way from where we are now. El Rocio is a picturesque little town some 20 kilometers northwest of Jerez, the home of Sherry. We're in the district of Andalusia in southern Spain, and I'm with Andrew Rankin. One of the areas we're going to cover in the film is the influence and sourcing of fresh cooperage uh, in the whisky industry. There's two main regions in the world that we source what we call fresh cooperage. One is here in southern Spain. The oak is supplied from forests in Galicia, which is in the north, and sent down to the bodegas in the towns of Jerez de la Frontera, Puerta de Santa Maria, and San Luca de Baramida, and that's known as the, the Sherry Triangle. The other area is America, where we get the American white oak uh, from forests in Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana. They're used to produce the famous American barrel, uh, which in turn is used to mature bourbon. A federal law in America dictates that bourbon can only be matured once in American white oak. The casks are then typically exported to Scotland and indeed countries throughout the world now for the maturation of premium spirits. The city of Jerez was founded over a thousand years ago by the Moors. The building I'm standing beside is the oldest remaining part, the Alcazar, the citadel, the Moorish citadel of the town. Right from the start, its wealth was based upon wine. Through the Middle Ages and Renaissance periods, the fact that there are so many fine churches and palaces here was based upon the wealth derived from wine. However, it was not until the 17th century that the first bodega or wine cellar as we understand it, was established here. And indeed not until the 1790s that English families came out, married into Andalusian families to create the great so-called Anglo-Andaluth dynasties, which are the, the great sherry houses we know today. These reached their zenith in the middle of the 19th century. 25 years ago, around 12,000 people were employed in the sherry and brandy industries in Jerez. Since then, modernization, the acquisition of smaller bodegas by large multinational companies and the consolidation of these have reduced this employment to around 2,000 people. Jerez today has a population of around 200,000, but around 15% of those are unemployed, the highest unemployment rate in all Spain. However, there are still remaining some small artisanal Bodegas. The rolling hills which surround Jerez are covered in vines. The earth itself is usually a blinding white under the hot southern sun. Baked hard. We've just had a terrific thunderstorm, as a matter of fact, and so the earth is a clay, heavy clay, very good for growing grapes. And once the grapes are cropped, they go into these white houses dotted on the hillsides called lagers, where they're turned into a must, an unfermented wine, out of which sherry will be made. The wine is sent from here into Jerez, uh, filled into the soleras. The sherry is made, filled into the casks, season them for a couple of year, years, and then the casks come to Scotland, bringing with them flavors from this place, as well as from the wood itself. The soil around Jerez, Andrew, is called alborizo. Yeah. As well as being highly nutritious, you can see it's clay-like. Yeah. And this is very important for these vines because it retains water. Mm -hmm. In a generally arid country, it'll hold the dew from the morning or indeed any showers such as we had last night. Yeah. Okay. What about the grapes? The grapes? Uh, let's have some here. Grapes are the Palomino, that's a principal grape that's used in sherry production. Uh, I'll give you a cup Thanks. there. 
Do they make any difference? Does the variety make any difference to the flavour that you're looking for? Not in terms of the, what we're looking for in whisky. No, what we rely on is the expertise of the winemaker. Uh, there are a few great varieties used in cherry production. Palomino being the principal one, but we rely on the skill of the winemaker to blend them in the bodega. What we're looking for principally is the final Oloroso. Yeah. Oloroso we're interested The quality of the wine the that's the important the wine thing. Mm. That goes into the Solera system. So great variety, principally Palomino, but not so important for us as an industry at this stage. Yeah.